Hi, I'm Steve and I'm the owner of InlineSkates.net. This video is about how to choose the right recreational slash fitness skate for you. So let's first talk about the category. Different manufacturers use the term differently, but basically the way I like to refer it is recreational skates are the skates with the higher cuff boots and the fitness or high performance skates are the ones with the lower cuff boots. But basically it's about performance. When you go to our site, you can actually look at the performance level of each skate on a little graph to make sure you're buying the right skate for you. But let me help you decide which kind of skate you want to buy. Now, in inline skates, the goal of buying an inline skate is to buy a skate that will fit you comfortably so that you'll have many hours of enjoyment skating around without getting blisters or not a good fit. But most importantly, to give you as smooth and effortless of a glide as you can. So the goal of an inline skate is to allow the skate to skate something like an ice skate would, where you push and you get a nice glide. So when you buy a low end skate, typically you're gonna get a skate with a lower quality boot, not as good of a fit, uh, lower quality bearing and wheel, not as good of a glide. So as you go up in price, what you get is a better fitting boot, you get a wheel and bearing that are gonna go smoother and faster. You may not necessarily be looking for fast speed, but you still wanna be able to get yourself the best wheel and bearing that you can afford because that'll give you a skate that'll be more fun and more effortless to use. It gets you the ability to get up the hills easier. Uh, it gets the ability to use the skates longer. The larger wheels will absorb more vibration in the road, making the rougher roads more comfortable. And if you enjoy skating, you're gonna do it much more often and that's really the goal of picking a good skate. All right, so let's kind of start with the components of a skate. So the components of a skate are basically the wheels, the bearings, the frame, and the boot. Let's start with the wheels. Now when you start with the entry level skates, you're typically using a small wheel, typically in a 76, 78 millimeter size. When you go to a uh, middle performance or performance oriented recreational skate, you're typically going to about an 84 or even more high performance into a 90 millimeter wheel. And if you're going to a really high performance fitness oriented skate, you're going to as much as 100 or even 110. So the reason why you want a bigger wheel is because a larger wheel with one rotation will actually make the skate go further than a smaller wheel will do with one rotation. It does take a little more effort to get the larger wheels up to speed, so it does take a little more pushing initially, but with recreational skating, typically you're going at about the same speed all the time, so once you get up to speed, the skate will actually go further on each push that you do, giving the skate a little more effortless glide as well as a little more power, particularly useful for when you're trying to get up hills and things like that. The next thing you want to look for in a skate is the bearing. Uh, the bearings on skates will typically come, they have different names on them. Some will say ABEX, some will say ILQ, some will say SG, but they all have a number. And the number really sort of tells you what is the grade of the bearing. Opening price point skates like this one will typically come with an ABAC 5 bearing or an SG5 or an ILQ5. Uh, better skates will come with an ABAC 7, which is probably where you want to be. An ABAC 7 is sort of the beginning of a bearing that will start to roll smooth. Or even better, if you go to a high performance skate, an ABAC 9, which will be a really nice smooth bearing, giving you the most effortless glide you can possibly get. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the frame, something that people often don't realize is an important feature of a skate. When you start with the less expensive skates, you typically get a plastic or Zytel-like frame. The reason why a plastic frame isn't as good is a plastic frame will tend to torque or twist as you start to put more power onto your skates. If you're just a beginner skater, or you just want to skate slowly out for the kids, that may be fine. But as you get better or you want to go faster on the skates and make the skates do more, you're going to want a frame that's going to be more durable. So you're going to want to go to a skate that has an aluminum frame. Aluminum is a much stronger frame. And the whole goal of inline skating is to transfer that power from your leg directly to your foot all the way down to the wheels. Anything that moves or twists between there, like a loose fitting boot or a boot that doesn't give good support, or a frame that's bending reduces the amount of power and to some degree even the amount of control that you have over your skates. So that's the advantage of an aluminum frame. Now this particular frame on a medium price point skate is a stamped aluminum frame, which is much better than a plastic frame, but as you go up in price to a high performance skate or a high performance fitness skate, 
these frames are made out of a milled aluminum. And the difference there is that instead of stamping a piece of metal, which weakens the metal slightly because it makes it expand or stretch, this frame is made out of a solid block of aluminum that's actually milled. So the integrity of the aluminum is stronger. This is actually made out of aircraft aluminum, the same stuff that they make airplanes out of. So this is super strong, giving you the most power directly to the wheels. The next thing we want to talk about is the boot. And this is really the part where the comfort comes in. It also has to do with performance because a tighter fitting, snugger boot's going to give you better performance. But most importantly is the more you spend, the more comfortable the boot's going to be. As you go up in price, you're going to get more lasted liners, meaning they're more custom fit around your foot. You're going to get memory foam in various places to allow the liner to actually mold around your foot. You're going to get a thicker tongue. You're going to get a better footbed that will absorb vibration and make your feet feel, feel um, softer to the rough pavement. And you'll get better lacing systems. The lacing system is kind of the key to lacing the skate up tightly. Some of them will have ratchet buckles. Some will have little knobs or things that you can use. Various different types of closures, all designed to be able to make the skate more and more comfortable. You'll notice that this skate actually has, this is a higher performance one, and it has plastic that wraps over that allows to make, make the skate much tighter and form fitting, where if you look at the less expensive one, there's nothing like that. It's all soft material going up to the top. All recreational skates have soft boots these days. Some of the higher performance ones, as you go into, say, a uh, high-end fitness skate or a race skate start to have carbon fiber and other stiffer materials to really make the skate stiff. And then as you go to the really high end, the biggest difference that you want to notice here is the boot. So most people are going to want to buy, if it's their first time skating or they're skating more on a casual basis, a boot with a higher cuff like this one. But if you're an advanced skater and you are comfortable with inline skating and you're looking for more ankle articulation, giving you more power, then you're going to want to go with a higher end, uh, high performance fitness like skate like this one that has a lower cuff and allowing you to have more power, but it does give you less support as well. Lastly, the brakes. We want to talk about the brake. All of these skates in the recreational fitness category come with a brake. Typically the brake is mounted on the right skate, but you can move it over to the left if you prefer. Uh, and the skates sometimes are in the box, so you'll need to put them on in, in case you don't want the skate, the, the brake. Lastly, let's talk about sizing. Uh, it's very important that skates fit true to size, meaning that you don't want to buy a skate with a little room in it to grow for your kid uh, so that they'll grow into it because if you do, then their foot's going to be moving around, giving them blisters, and also uh, not giving them the best performance that the skate can give them. So you really want to buy the skate true to your foot size. Some people will even go down a half a size at the higher end level because they're looking for that super tight fit. Uh, in terms of width, if you have a wide foot, I would lean towards the Rollerblade brand. And if you have a narrower foot, I would lean towards the K2 brand. All right, so to wrap this up, my recommendation is to buy the most expensive skate that you can afford. Now, obviously that sounds like a sales pitch, but it really is true. Quality doesn't cost here, it pays, meaning that if you buy a better skate, you're probably going to use it more, you're going to enjoy it more, and you'll stick with inline skating. If you buy an inexpensive skate, it'll be fun for a while, but you probably won't stick with it. And the goal here is to get something that you're going to want to use for many, many years.